What's going on y'all? Welcome to another vlog. It is, uh, this is gonna be a vlog about the nitty gritty stuff that nobody wants to watch. So if you're not interested in the build up of the gym or small details about business, I'll see you guys in the next technique. If you are, thank you for sticking with me. Today I'm going to be painting this wall over here all gray. And so the idea of me doing this is, uh, well first off, if you guys have watched my other vlogs, you would know that I really want to upgrade these mats. So I have the Pulsa mats right now. Um, I want to end up getting some Tommy mats or even, you know, if if money was right, I would get the, the Dolomer or like the ones that roll out. Uh, those setups are obviously really expensive, which led me to keeping the mats. And then I wanted to put on these walls um, the wall to Tommy mats because my students, especially the young ones, even though we don't do a lot of grappling, they always run and crash into the walls. It's fragile as is. Um, so I just wanted something to protect that. Problem is, I don't know how long I'll be in this actual physical location. I don't know if I'll be able to expand and take the unit beside me that will go through that door. Uh, so I don't want to get a setup that has to be custom, actually. I don't want to get a setup that I'm only going to use for you know, X amount of time. I want to make sure that I can continue to bring that to the next gym. Um, and who's to say that we're going to keep the gray scheme going on. So, uh, oh, on top of that, in order to do all that, I'd have to get rid of this door so that I can have a smooth surface. Again, construction, money, things I don't really need to do right now, uh, or is, is a priority in terms of spending. Uh, so which led me to painting the wall gray. Just so happened that there's some leftover paint uh, that I could use. The gray semi-gloss, it should be able to give the same effect. It'll be more durable in terms of getting fingerprints on it because uh, it will have that kind of glossy coat. So I've already lined it up. I already uh, pre-taped these uh, lines. I'm only going to be doing this corner wall. It's going to be kind of the section. That's also where uh, I do a lot of, not a lot of, all of the videos in terms of technique that you guys see on this channel. Um, so what I also did today, because the paint is similar, but it's not exact, I don't want one shade of gray, one shade of gray on the ground. There's a couple of pads here that are like a lighter shade gray, and then I have those gray, right? So what I want is for it to look a little cleaner. So I actually flipped these mats, and originally I had it all black, but then it kind of just looked like I was missing mats. So... Uh, I flipped it and then I flipped the center to kind of make like a ring so whether I decide to upgrade the mats tomorrow or in a year I kind of can just keep this space here uh, make it look like it was meant to be there because they're technically not the same mats as the ones that are, that are on over here so these were a later addition and they don't fit in they don't they don't attach uh, the same way, they don't have the same pattern, they're not the same shade, it's a whole mess. Um, so, I flipped it so that when this wall gets painted gray, um, there are a couple black accents in the gym as well, but everything should come together regardless of the shades of gray. It'll look clean, it'll look professional, and uh, it'll be a refreshing, dope start for uh, the year that Union Martial Arts is going to do so well, and there's going to be tons of content for you guys, so I'm excited. And yeah, so this is the nitty gritty stuff no one wants to see, no one wants to do, no one talks about. Uh, but this is all part of owning a business. If you want to save money, if you want to be cost effective, then you got to do some of these stuff yourself. And you got to be able to think outside the box to give the best product or delivery with uh, obviously the least amount of money being spent. Unless you got that dough, which I don't. So um, make sure you give this video a thumbs up so we can uh, get that YouTube money together. I just finished cutting for the most part. If you guys don't know what cutting means in painting terminology, I ain't no Picasso, but cutting is basically painting around the hard to reach areas. So when you're actually rolling, you know, mass surfaces like with these things, then uh, you don't have to go over those outlets or those light switches or those door handles and then you end up smudging it and getting all messy. Uh, so it's pretty much like the corners, the, the borders. The paint looks pretty good. Uh, it's coming out darker on the walls, which is a super, super good thing. So I think it's going to match with the floors quite nicely. 
I'm about to put on the first coat for the walls. Probably gonna have to do two coats. Hungry as hell though, but uh, we're gonna get this done tonight. All right guys, this is the finished product. Have the whole L wall painted even the, down to the very vinyl at the bottom. Super happy, it's very, very close to the actual mats. And um, the lines are pretty straight at the top. Um, you can still see a little bit of pencil marking that I used to draw the line in the first place. So after I clean that up, it should look even better. But overall, I'm super, super happy with it. It feels different, it feels fresh, it feels new. Um, and I think it really, really complements not only the filming area of the gym, but the switch up on the mats, having the black border here. Now it really feels like a lot of different pieces are coming together, but it's still, um, you know, very union martial arts. So it is 10.33. I took a little break, so I finished it pretty quickly. I'm gonna grab some food tonight, come back early in the morning, have a nice cleanup, and then uh, we'll have some sparring tomorrow. All right, so this vlog is kind of jumpy. Um, it's been a few days since I finished painting, so now that we kind of have the uh, daylight coming in, I want to give you guys kind of a full feel of how the gray looks, and it honestly matches so well. I'm super happy. It will come together with the mats. Everything in here is looking super good, super clean, and I'm excited to... Ooh, where's the light? And I'm excited to do more things in here, and I'm excited to bring in different things and just keep adding on to the gym that we have. And um, I came to the gym early. I'm gonna get a workout in. And I'm also going to finish taping up my new uh, Kali padded sticks. So I'm gonna kind of show you what I'm doing right now. And hopefully if you guys spar Kali yourselves or if you have padded sticks, you guys might think about doing this to preserve the longevity of your sticks because those things will rot super, super quick. So I'm gonna pull those out. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing and then uh, talk to you guys a little bit about the story, so to say, um, behind this entire vlog. All right, so these are the three sticks. Um, this is kind of our old one. Mind you, they're all the same material. They're all from the same place, I believe. Um, I have them all brought in from the Philippines, but you can get some uh, ones that are already done local depending where you're from of course uh, just make sure you you do your research on them and make sure that they're the specs that you want them to be now when it comes to what i've done to the sticks basically all i did was i took electrical tape and i've taped down the grip and i've also sealed it at the bottom here right so i'm just put the camera down real quick so when it comes to sparring uh, we hold it about a grip above the end of the stick here and basically what happens is when we spar obviously myself um, and with my students when they try to add in some power and speed they will put a lot of pressure and on top of that um, if they're not wearing any gloves and they have direct skin contact they'll sweat a lot and it'll really eat away at the grip so you can see on this one here this one's definitely been chewed up by, by simply just the squeeze on it over and over and over again. And um, of course you get the tear at the top here where it starts to burst out. Now the top one is hard to you know, avoid over a long amount of time. Eventually all your sticks will break. But um, I just took electrical tape and I pretty much patted this part down so that we'll be able to preserve one side. It's not gonna burst at the end of the grip and it's also going to be able to have a firm placement for your hand without kind of eating away at the, at the material with all the sweat and whatnot. So um, you can get any color like electrical tape you want, but basically you just wrap it around. First thing I do is I seal it on the top part. I put about three pieces, so one in the middle and then two over here, left and right, and then I just start wrapping around really, really tight, seal it off at the top, and then you're good to go. I really like this because uh, although it takes away kind of the creativity, like if I wanted to switch hands and strike, it takes away the, a little bit of the creativity, but it, it looks very clean, it looks very professional. Um, a good thing too with my kids program is, you know, a lot of them say like, oh, it's a lightsaber. So it's visually attractive, but also it'll hopefully maintain the sticks a lot longer. 
Um, and especially if, especially for us, we stick spar very frequently about every other week. So I really want to make sure that these have a lot of life in them, especially with the amount of hands that are going to be on them. And uh, of course, when we spar, I want to make sure we're using the right equipment and being safe. I I'm not all about that, you know, uh, live stick sparring, uh, full contact, blah, 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 blah. Uh, nothing against it, by the way. I think it's great. I think it's a great way to pressure test and, you know, everyone has a side of sparring. But my sparring that I focus on here, not, not really for just for myself, but for all my students, I need it to be approachable to even the young ones. And so if we're training with live sticks and then we're sparring with live sticks, you could imagine what the parents would say about signing up their kids here at Union Martial Arts because we're just going to end up battering each other, right? And so uh, it's one of the small, uh, you know, edits you, I feel you have to do to make a kids program for Kali um, or our niece or Screamer. For, for weaponry, it's a small twist you have to do in order to make it professional, make it appealing, make it look like we're not just a bunch of barbarians swinging our sticks. No matter how artistic and how uh, articulate our, our movements are, at the end of the day, it's, it's a stick and when stick has contact with skin, it hurts. And the last thing a parent wants is to send their kid in here to come home with bruises for the bruises to teach them or for them to, to you know, learn to quote unquote become tougher so that they don't get hurt or it doesn't bother them as much. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I have about uh, two, four, six, eight, something, 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 something. I got quite a bit to do. I'm going to hit my workout first so I can get that out of the way. And... Um, that's pretty much what my day is going to be before I start teaching. So, uh, I'm just going to sit down on my butt here. The last thing I wanted to talk about um, in regards to the nitty gritty stuff, this especially goes for, you know, martial artists that are trying to, you know, start their own program or even open up their own gym. And um, I'm going to leave it as a martial artist. I'm sure it can apply to pretty much anyone out there, but this is from direct experience as well. You know, um, when a lot of people want to start their own gym or they want to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, they want to be their own boss, I guess. I guess they want to be a martial art entrepreneur type of person. And they're really, really phenomenal as a martial artist. Their, their technique is amazing. You know, they're really, really good. Let's not even talk about teaching right now, right? Because that's a whole nother beast when it comes to, uh, you know, becoming a martial arts instructor um, but a lot of the times people decide to do martial arts because they're it's fun it's something they enjoy and it's something that they can envision doing for the rest of their life now when it comes to making it a career especially if you're going to open up your own gym you know I, I believe the greater percentage of the population doesn't have that money up front to invest into you know marketing and invest into um, the back structure Back structure, back end, the structure of the business, um, even into like design and and um, pretty much like all the things except for martial arts. And so a lot of people think that as long as you have the skill of martial arts, you'll be okay. And uh, to be honest with you guys, doing this for a while now, and I'm not saying I'm the most successful martial artist that uh, owns and operates a gym, but I do know that the success doesn't come from your skill in martial arts. That's like, that's like the tip of the iceberg. That, that's like the 10% out of everything that you do. And I, I spoke a little earlier when I was painting about, you know, you have to be able and be willing to do the nitty gritty stuff. The stuff that people don't care to hear. The people, people want to know your flying arm bars and your, your, your 10 strikes and your disarm and your knife flow. Those are what people care about, but to, in order to you know, produce something like that and in order to showcase it to the world either you know, on YouTube or either you know, by seminars or having you know, awesome classes, it's the back end stuff. And to be able to do the back end stuff, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable for a very long time and you have to be willing to accept that you're going to mop these floors every night, you're going to sweep, you're going to do all the small things. You want the walls painted? Go out and buy paint and go out and buy the equipment to paint on, you know? If you want 
anything, you gotta be willing to do it and maintain it and do all the small things because that's what customers want to see when they first walk in. It might not sell them because of course, you have to be a good teacher and you have to be able to know what you're doing. But at the same time, nobody wants to train, especially if you're thinking about a large scale. No one, unless you're a hardcore martial artist, wants to train in a dirty gym, in a chaotic gym, and nobody wants to be doing business with someone that's unprofessional. And you guys have to remember that, even though we're martial artists and we are, you know, we are born and bred on the mats, and this is where our this is where we we shine the most. Unless you can hire a manager, unless you can have someone to represent you on the office end, you got to be able to do both. And in order to do both, you have to be able to do all the small things. You have to know the ins and outs, and spend the time to study, you know, um, taxes. You have to do the time to to study on effective ways to teach, effective ways to market to students, to get them in, to retain them. There's a whole beast of a world out there and I think that's why a lot of martial arts schools fail. It's because, you know, you get this martial arts instructor who may not even like teaching, but they're really good at martial arts and they think that's it. It's not that simple, you know. There are millions of incredible martial artists out there all across the world. And some of them don't have a platform, some of them do. But you'll see a wide variety of people, successful gym owners, that aren't necessarily, you know, the, the, the hoist Gracie of jiu-jitsu or, you know, the, the Dan Inosano of Filipino martial arts, right? They don't have that name, but they have structure. They have something that they can use and, and scale and be able to be successful. And look, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good you are. If you're thinking about this in a business perspective, you need to be able to bring in students because that is probably your number one form of getting paid. Of course, unless you're like a world-class instructor where you travel the world and so on and so forth, something I'd love to do as well. But as a home base in union martial arts, no matter how good of a martial artist I can be, and even no matter how good of a teacher I can be, people aren't going to uh, people aren't going to look for me unless I give them something to look for. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of students have found me because they're, you got you guys have been watching my vlogs or they've been watching my technique videos. They see me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and it's just that consistent grind, doing all those things that um, you know you don't necessarily care for, that you don't want to. I take a, a technique video and then I dissect it into four different media outlets and then just post it and you know create the buzz if I can and I try to stay consistent those are the things that you know some martial artists out there don't want to do they just want to be the guy who trains and it's it's courageous and it's uh it's honorable I would say but you got to get with the times you got you got to be able to evolve and, and humble yourself that your skill is just you know, that small point in which you'll be able to actually do martial arts for a living. And, and, you know, by living, I mean not just doing it for fun. I mean being able to pay your bills and being able to, you know, essentially create a platform or create something that can provide for you for the rest of your life. That's a very difficult thing to do. Very, very difficult thing to do. And so, um, yeah, I mean, shoot, go, go sweep your floors, go... Go read a book. Go go watch some YouTube videos. Man, everything is on YouTube. It's completely accessible. So, I mean, just take your time and, and spend it well and spend it wisely and never think you're good. You're too good for something. Never think you can stop. Like, it, you don't need to learn anymore because you can always learn something in one of these fields that I'm sure you're lacking in. And that's probably the biggest reason why you aren't where you want to be right now. And at the end of the day, just keep doing it. It might take years, it might take you know, months, it might happen very quickly. However long it is, you just commit to the process and commit to the growth and you know, um, never leave yourself with an excuse why you're not successful. Don't blame it on someone else. Don't blame it on, on external factors. Don't blame it on you know, your, your life situation, your, uh, you know, some past mistakes you've made. Don't blame it on anything because it's all possible. It's it's all completely possible. I started all of this borrowing $60 with zero experience 
from my instructor who taught me out of a basement and speaks very limited English. So, I mean, I'm just a normal guy who is comfortable with the uncomfortable. And so I hope you guys, if you guys want to open up your own gyms, if you want to become a personal trainer, um, if you want to take martial arts to the next level in your life, aside from just the hobby and you want to do something with it, please do take the time to really not only hone yourself on the mats, but also hone yourself in the business world, in the marketing world, in the sales world, um, and just be the total package. And I guarantee you guys will see a huge difference. So I'm gonna end the vlog here, guys. If you are still watching this and you guys enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up and comment below if you want me to speak a little bit more on my business experiences. Um, share with me as well what you guys have do been doing that is, uh, is successful for you guys if you have gyms already or if you have programs. Uh, let me know. Let's all share. It's all out there. So I mean, there is no real secret to, to the success except it's just the hard work and the consistency. And again, that nitty gritty stuff no one wants to talk about. Uh, new technique video is coming out as well. FMA Concepts is, uh, is we're prepping for our Blade Concepts tutorials. So um, it'll be our next cycle available. Shout outs to all of the members. We are officially at 100 members. So thank you guys. And also, I didn't forget, but thank you so much for helping me hit 20,000 subscribers. I believe we're at 20,100 and change. But um, I mean, I'm, I'm blessed that I can do this for a living and I'm even more blessed that, you know, you guys enjoy it and you guys continue to watch my content. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and help us reach our next milestone. I'm not even gonna say the number. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing and I'm gonna make sure I keep bringing you guys the best Kun Tao, Kali, kickboxing, business, vlogs, and technique videos out there. So I appreciate you guys. Love you guys for supporting this channel. And until next time, Catch you guys then.